Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Oceans and Fisheries and Reeds. Um, has he seen the Our Marine Environment 2025 report, which shows that New Zealand's oceans are warming 34 per cent faster than the global average? And if so, what actions is he taking to address this? The Honourable Shane Jones. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, yes, I am aware uh, of that report and uh, will be sharing my thoughts with the Minister for the Environment on that matter. But I have to tell the member, 5.2 million people residing in the South Pacific with an economy of about 440 billion Kiwi dollars has zero control over the direction or the heat being generated by the Pacific Ocean. Supplementary. Does he accept the report's finding that climate change is driving significant changes in our oceans? And if so, does he believe that the attempts to drill for more fossil fuels will help or harm our moana? Yes. Well, obviously, uh, Mr Speaker, uh, our contribution to global emissions is 0.17 per cent, less than 1 per cent. It is the height of conceit to imagine that somehow by closing down New Zealand industry we're going to save the planet. The planet is more than capable of saving itself and we will adapt in good time. Um, what point of order, Mr Speaker? I don't believe the Minister addressed the question. It was whether he believed that attempts to drill for more fossil fuels will help or harm. Well, I think he did answer it when he, he used some uh, uh, acceptably colourful language to describe what he thought of the question. I'm sorry to say. Yeah. Somebody question. Uh, we'll go one more here. Tiano, uh, Tiano, Tiano. Does he accept yeah, no. that warming oceans pose? He, he, he sat down. I was waiting for him to talk. Yeah, sorry. Wait on. With all due respect. <laughs> you make them up all the time. With all due respect. I've called Tiana Tuiana. Point of order. The right on one With all due respect, he had never asked for the supplementary question when you'd given it to him. How does that work? We'd like some old fashioned rules restored to this place. Yes, yeah, good. And as uh, the member will have listened carefully to what I said yesterday, all supplementary questions are at the discretion of the speaker, not the person who wants them. Tiano Tuiano. Oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Uh, does the minister accept that warming oceans pose a risk to the sustainability of the fishing industry and fishers' livelihoods? And if so, what is he doing to ensure fishing in New Zealand can be a sustainable source of income for years and decades to come? Speaker, uh, on the question of fisheries, the um, proposed mining. God willing to proceed off the coast of Taranaki will have minimal impact on the strength or the vitality of fisheries. And sadly, fish do move around. Consequently, it behoves the government to change from time to time its regulatory approach so that the harvesters, the guardians and the regulators of our fisheries resource have multiple options in front of them to deal with the changing fortunes of the oceanic environment. But, sir, to suggest that a single minister or a government or 5.2 million people at the distant end of the South Pacific can effect change when larger climate change emitters are doing zero is fanciful. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. With respect to mining fossils, which is what four countries are doing, namely China, USA, India and Russia, and contributing to 60 per cent of the emissions. What hope have we got to change that? Speaker, uh, the hope is we will dig our own coal up, starting with 200 plus thousand tonnes to reduce our reliance on imported Indonesian coal. The hope is with the $200 million allocated in the budget, sir, we will accelerate the development of the oil and gas industry. Sadly, we are unlikely to see unanimity until the former, dis former minister disappears from parliament. Supplementary. Tiano, Tiano. Is the minister at least concerned that warming Sorry, oceans... Start again. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr Speaker. 
Is the Minister at least concerned that warming oceans pose a risk to human health due to to toxic algae blooms? And if not, why not? So it be, it's really important that the Minister of Fisheries and Oceans deal in facts. And those facts have to be informed by rationality, science and technology. And then when those facts are evident, our society is more than capable, sir, of adapting to the challenges. But any suggestion that we're going to hollow out industry, including fisheries, to meet this dreamlike conception of how dangerous climate change is, it's never going to be agreed to by this minister. Supplementary. Uh, does he stand by his statement from September that catch limits for Chatham Rise and southern New Zealand orange roughy will be more than half to support sustainability following a careful scientific assessment? And if so, what has changed about the best scientific information available since then? Nice. Uh, speak up. Thank the member for that question. Obviously, setting total allowable commercial catch limits for any fish species is a balance, as reflected in the purpose of the Fisheries Act. Not only do we have to be mindful of the scientific evidence and the pressure on stocks, we also have to take account of the statutory status of utilisation. I'm confident that the information fed into that decision will stand the test in good time. 